This is an extra special episode 44, Apple Special Spring Event 2016, on Monday, March 21st, 2016. And now, I thought I said so many quotable things. This next special is hosted by Brian Mitchell and Ryan Rampersad, with special guest Brandon Johnson, who barged in unannounced and uninvited. I do apologize for some audio glitches in this episode. There seemed to be a deficit of bandwidth, so please bear with us. Hi, guys. Hello. Hi. So it sounds like so, there's so- some sort of a Apple event we have to talk about today. That's right. Yes, this would be the, the spring, later March 2016 iOS event. Yeah, it's vaguely ios yeah, yeah, iPhone, iPad, and Watch. All those good TV things. TVOS, Watch yeah. Band event. There was some TVOS stuff going on there, too. We actually just up- updated our Apple TV, so I think it's safe to say that there's a couple of things we can talk about there. Just a few things. Indeed. So I guess the first thing I'd like to start out with is uh, a rundown of a couple of the kind of recap or event in review posts that I saw and uh, I think a couple of other us have put some stuff in the in the notes here yep. uh, about because some people are doing some really cool stuff about it. Uh, the first one I want to call out is uh, Stephen Hackett's 512 Pixels, uh, which is a blog that sometimes goes into the um, what I'd kind of describe as the more like designy and like uh, retro aspects of Mac hardware. So 512 Pixels is the um, screen size of the original Macintosh, if I'm not mistaken. Um, it's amazing to think of how far we've come from there, eh? Uh, but Steven's post is really rather interesting. Uh, he gives a rundown of everything that was updated, uh, and he takes it from a really interesting perspective, so I'd highly recommend it. And then another of the ones that I'd like to point out is iMores. Um, one thing about iMore is that they are very verge-ish in their, um, in their uh, ads, so if you uh, do not like your content to be obscured by mostly ads, uh, you might want to take appropriate action uh, for that. But if you'd like to support iMore uh, by encouraging them to continue to use obnoxious uh, takeover ads that even they, the editorial staff of iMore, seem to dislike, um, then don't turn on your ad blocker, I guess. But they're, they're, for all the criticism I just gave their, uh, their business side, um, the post is really cool. And they also are pretty comprehensive and they've got some fun videos from Rene Ritchie and I believe Serenity Caldwell too, who is a really awesome writer over at iMore. Uh, and they, in addition to being really comprehensive, it's just really cool folks. So give that one a read too. And of course you have the Verge rundown, which is very short, written by a bunch of people, and it has some nice pictures in it. That's about it. Indeed. The Verge says hi. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much all the Verge can do at this point. <laughs> It says hi halfway down the page after you've seen the full page ad for the, the new yeah, yes and the, and the seven full bleed images right right so I guess we should start going uh, through the keynote today uh, because if you somehow did not read one of those rundowns and recaps already and you actually wanted to listen to the show let's begin right so uh, there are a couple different things uh, I guess it might be important to lead off with we're kind of following the uh, the timeline of the keynote. So if you want to watch around, uh, watch along with us, I don't know if you would or not, but if you would, this could read kind of like a director's <laughs> cut, except for none of us are directors of the keynote. No, so, we're more of a uh, bad, bad pundits. Yeah. Bad pundits. That's you. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, <laughs> um, so the first, the first two are kind of fun, but I want Ryan to read these because he came up with some really fun, uh, kind of mnemonics for these. I did. What, so what, what is it, Ryan? Well, when, uh, Tim Cook, our, our good, good friend, Tim Cook came out on stage today, he didn't open with his traditional sales numbers and how wonderful the stores are doing. No, instead he talked about something closer to home, something closer to the homeland, which is of course the current battle of encryption that apple is going through with the fbi and so my uh my my joke was encrypt tim uh which is uh clever because you know tim and uh the t and the i and the m something like that uh incidentally the story has developed further today and apparently the fbi are trying to run away now and so that's pretty funny i guess we'll have to talk about that on another show sometime soon indeed you'd think that if we had an apple focused show 
there might be something no particular that, that we can. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe you would have to make it like a pod kit or something. Yeah. Sounds about right. Yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> so then we also have here the environment Tim, and it is because Apple likes green things. Uh, apparently, they have this huge R and D project about how to recycle old iPhones. Uh, apparently, nobody recycles old iPads and or MacBooks. But Apple does. And they have a, a they have a teardown robot named Liam. That is accurate. And is... Uh, if if you if you saw the uh, segment of the keynote where they talked about this, I am totally thinking that that's a One Direction reference. Like categorically, it's too adorable. You know, Hashtag so Liam. when um during the keynote they they had this um <laughs> video playing, show you know introducing you to the robot and showing how it worked. And I kept waiting for like Johnny Ives to come out of the white background and, and like, what are you doing to my products, machine? Yeah. <laughs> so true. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. Uh, environments are important. So, so I hear. So I yeah, hear. And actually, one, one more notable environment thing. They announced uh, 93% of their worldwide power is generated from renewable sources. Oh, right. And um, so that also brings up another point. It was five. Seven countries are completely renewable, including the U.S. Uh, I want to say the U.K. Maybe or it was Australia. I know. I, I think so. um, um, Austria was in there, but Austria doesn't have any Apple stores, so it's probably just like one office. But it's renewable. <laughs> yeah, but you still have to pay tax. So, uh, the, incidentally, during that same little segment, they they showed a, a uh, like a, a skyline view of Singapore. And they had right. a, 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 an overview image of the city, and they said, oh, well, we installed 800 solar panels to power one office, and I'm, I'm, I'm not quite sure how that works. <laughs> like, they bought I have, it 800... It sounded almost like they, they paid for solar to go in and go back to the grid, and they just tapped into the grid. So they're putting in about as much power as they're using, but it's not direct one-to-one. Still, they yeah, bought 800 that's buildings... That's if you're putting of solar panels on top of dozens of buildings, you can't really wire that no, no, in no, any efficient way. Right, yeah, absolutely. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Totally. I think that they also it's... Had a photo of... So I, I think that, you know, one of the things that's pretty likely about that, at least at least from, from what I've heard, is that, like, for, for a company like Apple with such astronomic cash on hand, like just saying hey we'll take over your roof and uh put solar panels on it um that's you know that's something that they could definitely afford to do even though it looks pretty pretty ludicrous when you when you take the sky the bird's eye view yeah that's kind of what i was thinking it's interesting but it's also yeah as you say ridiculous and they also had a photo of uh and i think it was china they had a bunch of solar panels and they had a bunch of yaks underneath eating the grass and and in yaks and i think and they were saying they were able to put solar fan panels down without disrupting what was there before so i thought that was pretty good so if you do a search right now for, on google as well. if you do a search right now on google for the word solar yak the <laughs> the picture presented today in the keynote will be one of those results oh that's amazing thank you internet apple's got that seo yeah that that is um that is a solar yak enjoy <laughs> So Apple also did something we weren't really expecting, which was an expansion or a companion app to Research Kit, which uh, they're calling CareKit. So tell me more. Right. So CareKit's really nifty because it uh, expands on the sort of things that Research Kit did to um, change the way that like universities and hospitals could conduct uh, clinical trials, or clinical trials might not be the correct technical term, like uh, medical research. Um and kind of expanded that with a with a more like patient focus, which is pretty nifty. Um, so the result is instead of just saying, "Oh, run all these tests and pass the information back to researchers," you can actually uh, make applications that help track and, in some cases, uh, like like almost treat um, certain conditions. So they gave, they gave the examples of like Parkinson's disease and like um, autism and uh, epilepsy as uh as conditions that they could um like th- they could it's like diagnose help. really uh in some cases diagnose in some cases like monitor uh, i think they had a testimonial from one person who s- says that the app that she was using 
uh, could help her like understand when a seizure was coming and um, like prepare for it so she could get like adequate time to make sure that she was um, in like a safe place or a place where she could feel comfortable. So yeah, it's it seems like a really, really, really uh, important development to what Research Kit was originally. And it sounds like it wasn't a place where they were intending to go when they announced Research Kit however long ago. Yeah, it seems like a good yeah, progression. Federico uh, tweeted something earlier. Um, I'm trying to find it now, but I'll just summarize it. Saying how the research kit, care kit is really, here it is, health kit plus research kit plus care kit is honestly the most important tech Apple is working on. Love this. I think that is quite true. And I think it will, it, it brings the phones into a, like a new level from just being right. phones and media things into something that can help other people. And people may get an iOS device, not because of anything special other than just that it has care kit and can help with their sickness or something. You know, Absolutely. I love the idea of it, but for me, because I live in a multi-platform world, it annoys me that it's locked to one platform. It's a great idea. It makes sense that all vendors should open offer source. something like it. Yeah, it's open source, but you know nobody else is going to implement it. It would be nifty if they would, though. But you're right, yeah. they're, they're not going to because you know, it's all written in Cocoa <laughs> for there, Cocoa Frameworks. There is that. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. That's a whole other episode it, talking it, about it, Apple's it, open source. It is a whole other uh, episode. <laughs> so, but on this episode, we should talk about it's... Apple Watch Bands. We should indeed. So Apple announced a couple of different uh, new watch bands, including but not limited to the woven nylon, which is kind of seen, at least in my eyes, as a competitor to the sport band. Um, In fact, there's one in particular that I've got my eye on that's really nifty and blue looking. Um, And uh, there was some talk that they might have announced some new partnerships with brands like Hermes or something, but they didn't. Um, At least they didn't based on my reading and based on my looking at the things um, that came out of it afterwards. Um, but the new bands that came out were pretty nifty. In addition to the woven nylon one, there was also uh, a bunch of new uh, sport band colors that were announced, and later on uh, some new leather bands as well, which are also looking really nice. Also a uh, new so- black Milanese loop. Right, right. I would be yeah. remiss if, if we didn't mention but I think that. It's, that's pretty I nifty think it's a little more expensive, too. Uh, it is one forty nine, like but it's it's the same price as the. No, I think I think the steel because that section says starts at. I think oh, okay. steel the non black is like one forty nine. The other one's one ninety nine. No, nah, it says like one forty nine here. Maybe it's a different size thing. Right, that might be it. Maybe yeah. Yeah, yep, that's what it is. Yeah, okay. those uh those bands. You know, how many bands do we have now? Tons. So I, think... I own three bands, but only I own... one is Apple. I own two bands, both Apple, and I'm probably going to get a third one sometime in the next six months because that blue one. What's your second bad. one? My second one is a red. You got the white sport. Right. Uh, so with sport. my watch, I, I have a white sport band. Um, then because all of my Apple products, except for uh, my laptops, have the red case, if I can, if I can find a way to get it. Um, my 5S has a red leather case. My watch has a red watch band, and my iPad has a red uh, smart cover. Uh, So for for Christmas, my parents hooked me up with a a red sport band, which is pretty neat. I like it a lot. But this woven nylon one, uh, yeah, the blue one is calling out to me. That one or the blue uh, classic buckle. Yeah. Yeah. I I just got, in the end of February, a a third-party NATO-style uh, nylon band so it's not quite like the apple one i think the apple one would is likely gonna stay a little higher quality but the one i have is pretty good but i'm just i just want to try on one of the woven nylon ones just to see because then maybe i would buy that one too i just want to say right. that i am we'll so glad happens. i don't have any part in this <laughs> <laughs> yeah apple's gonna make all their money in the accessories for this watch, I bet. Because I have so many bands. And I've been eyeing on the classic buckle, too. But it's 149 Yeah, uh, it's like that's half the price of the watch. You know, for me, <laughs> I, I guess I'm, 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 too, I'm too functional. I want to sell people on function and not form. Yeah. yeah. But the form also has a function. I thought like, that, too. I, but... 
I, I want to use the sport band when I'm running, and I want to use the woven nylon band when I'm running slightly less fast. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I can see why you might need that ability. Yeah, so like when I'm walking, so you know, it's totally different when I'm walking to uh, to the grocery store and when I'm when I'm training. When you're running to the grocery store, ten k. Yes, exactly. (laughs) When I'm running to the grocery store, so I can use my Apple Pay to buy my Apple Pay Kool Aid. Yes, exactly. Um, (laughs) Well, maybe you can afford more Kool Aid by getting a cheaper entry model Apple Watch. Ah, yes, indeed. So Apple reduced the price on the 38 millimeter uh, Sport, Apple Watch Sport. Uh, so now it's uh, 249 if I recall no. correctly. I think the 38 is, why is it so hard to find? It's 299 Yeah, 299 And the 42 is... The 42 is... is yeah. Yep, 349 now. So $50 yeah. price cut. Yeah. Wonderful, right? This is going to yeah, bring in so many more people. It right? might sell a few more. It's really going to make the the watch uh, accessible to people who have fifty dollars less. Well, and that I thought of that. To... I, yeah, I think, I don't know. I think in a way, what it'll allow people to do is get another band that if they, if they hadn't been able to afford or didn't want to splurge for a fifty dollar band, maybe they can just do that now. Right. Right. Yeah. That's a very good point because I would, you know, I don't think I would have ever bought another band with my watch. I was already feeling sheepish enough about dropping the money on the watch itself. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So let's go on to some uh, bigger hardware. Indeed. So the the... SE. SE? What does SE stand for? Uh, Sweet and extreme. (laughs) That again. Swaggy. Swaggy especially. Oh my gosh. (laughs) Super excellent. Yeah, I feel, <laughs> I feel like we've gone down uh, this path uh, before. I don't know. Yeah, we it's have. A little familiar. It's uh, it's never any less entertaining. <laughs> yeah, but I still don't know what it means. Okay, so let's talk about it. What do we have? So, a brief overview of this is: it's essentially an iPhone 5s case, um, with the addition of the rose gold color and gold color. I don't think the 5s had those, though. I could be wrong, so don't quote me on that. We did have um, the gold, but not the rose gold. Okay. Um, but the inside is more or less the same as the iPhone 6S with a 4-inch display because it's a iPhone 5S case, and it does not have um, forced, or 3D touch. Sorry. So the display is the same on the site. It's saying it has full RGB, sRGB standard. Does that bit come? Does anyone know? Well, uh, whether that was on the 5S? Well, this is the SE. I don't know if the five. Let's see if the five S is still on Apple site. Probably not. I, yeah, I don't. I don't think the five S has that. I think it's uh, a little bit of a lower resolution screen than that. That's for sure. Well, the resolution's the same as far as I can tell. But oh, really? The the the, the, yeah. the 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 actual panel might just be newer and better. Right. That's yeah. I that's, think it. Uh, I think it. Description. It has. But yeah, it comes with the A9 chips, the 64, same 64-bit uh, embedded M9 motion coprocessor. It has the 12 megapixel S8 camera, live photos, autofocus, focus pixels, true tone flash, 64 megapixel panorama, um, same kind of stuff. The hybrid IR filter, I don't think that was in the iPhone 5S. Does it have, um, um, does it have that uh, slow-mo stuff? Yep, it has the slow-mo, so the... Um, same slow-mo as the iPhone 6 has had. The 6 and 6 has had the same. So that's 120p, uh, or sorry, 120 frames per second at 1080p and 240 frames per second at 720p. And it can record 4K at 30 frames per second. Um, yeah, let's see. It has um, the FaceTime HD camera is 1.2 megapixels. I think the 6S has a 5 megapixel. Oh, that might be the iPad Pro. That's another thing I should look at because I think high-resolution front-facing cameras in our day of selfies is kind of important. Indeed, indeed. So uh, a couple more things I have to say about the iPhone SE is that um, the presenter who was talking about this at the keynote uh, really positioned this as a phone that helps people get into uh, iPhones or get into smartphones. Mm -hmm. but mostly iPhones. Um, he mentioned particularly that it's nice for emerging markets yep. like uh, 
like China, where um, that's, that form factor of a phone seems to be doing really well for them. Um, and also in America too, where you want you want to get people hooked on smartphones. Well, the way to do it is to not uh, not sell them the big multi thousand dollar flagship. It's to uh, kind of start small in more ways than one. It seems, or at least that's what they were. Uh, that's the way they were describing it. Yeah, I, and, would, I uh, would agree with that. Yeah, it's. I mean, heck, I slightly embarrassed to say it, perhaps, but I'm actually looking at the SE as a potential replacement for my 5s because. I don't know if I could uh, stick it out for uh, for the seven, and I don't know if I really want to uh, to uh, hop on the six uh, the six form factor because, gosh darn, do I ever like the size of my uh, of my iPhone five S right here. So, so uh, pretty... speaking of affording things, let's talk about the pricing. Ah yes. So the iPhone SE starts at six three ninety nine and sixty four for four ninety nine. So that's quite a bit cheaper than the iPhone six S. 16 gigabytes for what is this? This is blind 649, I think. Maybe. I think that's right. I'm pulling Expensive. up the pricing page myself. Uh, and a correction from before the iPhone 6 S1.2. And I'm comparing them right now, so I'm just double checking differences. The iPhone SE has a uh, slightly lower contrast, 800 to 1 versus the iPhone 6S, 1400 to 1. Right. Um, same brightness though. All uh, the iPhone six six S and all the pluses and SE all have sRGB standard. Um, nice. Oh, interesting. The all the phones except for the SE have dual domain pixels for wide viewing angles. It's not. Is that it's not an IPS display or is dual domain pixels something else that they've introduced? I think that might be a remember. new thing. Okay. Right. Well, no, it's been I... since the iPhone six. Mm-hmm. So I'm not sure. Or they're just trying to make it sound better on the better ones. <laughs> That's fair. That's totally fair. Mm-hmm. So I think the price on this is really interesting. Three ninety nine is the territory in which people can afford to buy a phone outright immediately, and for right. a lot of prepaid markets, which is where a lot of the U.S. expansion is these days, definitely there is um, a big need to not have a seven hundred eight hundred dollar price point on a phone, you know, when you have on the website, well, you can buy an iPhone or you can buy a Galaxy S7. Which one would you like? Well, I want an iPhone. Oh, but it's $800. I can't afford that. Oh, but now, yeah. it's, but now it's only 400 and maybe you can. So that it's much easier to, to get into that market. Um, but beside that, I think it's also interesting that they have done what we've wanted for years and it took them this long to do it so you know years and years ago we always imagined that they would totally make a cheaper iphone well it's not really a cheaper iphone it's the same iphone we've had all along it's just cheaper to make now so that it's not as doesn't have to be as expensive right right yeah i think it's i think it's really good that they're they're putting the a9 in there yep. but taking out other features mm-hmm. because it's gonna age the phone much much better yep and so, you know, a lower resolution front facing camera, it has the first gen fingerprint sensor rather than the second. Nobody so, will notice. you know, small things like that, that, yeah, the people aren't going to say, oh, I should have paid $250 more to get that. Or, exactly. Or having speed, because this, this phone could last four years, like a 6S now could last four years. It might be bad in four years. But if the iPhone SE was the same specs as the iPhone, wouldn't last five years. So, so sorry, what, four years. What do we think? So the... I think it's very important that it's yeah, go ahead. Yeah, cutting the features mm-hmm. that uh, make it still worth a lot, but worth getting so at the same time. That that was disconnected. So what do you, what do we think? The, you go, Ryan. What do we think the timeline for this phone is? So when do we get the next one? I bet it's going to be two years. Yeah, so uh, it's gonna be two every, every two years in spring, we'll get a, an iPhone SE update. That's my guess, yep. Yeah, I could. I, I think that's fine. It's supposed to be their cheap line. So so what does that mean? So when um, the iPhone 7 comes out later this fall, what happens to the 6 and 6S? They just stop making those altogether? Or do they keep those in the lineup just as cheaper options also? I bet that's gonna that's gonna cease to become a thing. I bet they're gonna try to pull the iPhones into a similar pattern as the um, as the MacBooks, right? And you just sell you sell the current MacBooks, right? And uh, that allows you to have a, a different kind of flexibility than the iPhone line has had in the past. Yeah, but maybe. maybe that's just wishful thinking. But when you think about that, they spent the last two years 
uh, with the machining, and it's all free now. They have it done. It's ready to go. Why not just keep it around? Uh, from a marketing perspective, as I tend to approach these things, I just I think it's more parallel to do it uh, to do it this way, and it's easier to easier to talk about. And they've got the capital around; they can make new machines whenever they want. That's right? true; they do. <laughs> but it's free now. It's like uh, just just free margins. That's absolutely that's absolutely valid, and that's uh, I would I would actually argue that that's more valid than the thing that I'm saying. So like, but I'm saying the thing that I'm saying anyway for reasons look, I don't fully understand. We didn't get there yet, <laughs> but if you look at the iPad Pro line right now. And or right. the the new expanded iPad line, rather, it is a jumbled mess of a t- an, an iPad Mini, an iPad Air two, an iPad Mini four, an iPad Pro small one, an iPad Pro big one. There's tons of room for different price points and on I've these iPhones. Two, so. Yeah, so it's not clear to me why they wouldn't keep the iPhone six and 6s next re- iteration. That's totally fair. Because they, they have the SE. Uh-huh. I think that if they're still selling the SE, because the SE is, it's yes, it is a four-inch screen, but it's more powerful than the six. Although I guess the six then fits to a larger screen, but you don't care as much about speed. Right. So I, I, I would love to see Apple having just the current year's model and then updating the SE six months later and updating that every year. So mm. you have a big and a small. And they're both updated constantly. I think that would be best. But then lose the, I still don't want to pay that much. I want last year's cheaper model. Right. And so. I don't know. It's, this is all really complicated. I could also see them selling the current, the current larger screens and the year before. So the six or so next year would be the seven and the SE and the SE2 or whatever they end up calling SE2. it. SE2. It is. The, so, the ones would be based on the A10. Such a bad name. Right, right. See, the the last thing I'll say on this topic is that I think that the uh, Schiller, so product marketing, and um, and the the design folks, I bet they have enough sway that uh, on the on the flagship product line that 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 sort of thing wouldn't fly. That they'd be willing to make new new machining for for that sort of thing if they thought it would help people understand the product line better. And when I say better, I mean that in a way that would be advantageous to their bottom line, but, uh, or not to their bottom line, perhaps, but to their, to their profits. But. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, speaking of new things, let's talk about some iPads. Indeed. Indeed. So the iPad pro, uh, sort of got an update today in that, uh, there's a new model introduced to the iPad pro family, which is the 9.7 inch iPad pro, which is a similar form factor to what the, uh, average iPad air would, uh, would have. It's got a couple fancy new features though. Uh, like it's a uh, larger sibling. It has support for, uh, the Apple pencil. Uh, it's got a fancy new camera, which is actually higher resolution than the one in its larger sibling. Uh, and it also has something they're calling a true tone screen which, uh, at least based on my recollection and based on my reading, is unique to this model. So it has uh, apparently better, um, it, it represents colors in a way that's more uh, accurate to uh, the actual nature of, of uh, the color on the screen, which is uh, pretty nifty if you're a designer type person, or uh, certainly if you're a person like me who has accidentally worked in Adobe Illustrator with Flux turned on, which is not yeah, don't a do that. Uh, good thing to do. because. No. Uh, all of a sudden, your podcast logos start coming out uh, in strange colors. Like don't orange. Ryan? Yeah. That, like the, orange. <laughs> um, I can tell you a story later about that because it's happened to me too. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it, it's it's pretty nifty. And it also comes with this smart connector uh, for smart accessories like uh, the smart keyboard case that uh, they're selling alongside, uh, that they've been selling alongside the Pro for some time now. Uh, so, all in all, it seems like a pretty neat product. So when I'm when I'm going through here the iPad Pro spec listing, it's interesting mm-hmm. to me how a lot of the listings on the new one, which is the lesser, you know, the less expensive one, how they have right. more new things. So the uh, the 9.7 inch has the True Tone display as you mentioned. It has the same A9X, um, right. but then it has all these improved camera things, improved noise reduction, improved face detection, and, and stuff. And uh, it's kind of funny. It has more Absolutely. better video things for some reason, which is kind of interesting. Right. Um, it, it it has some new things, and I'm not sure 
what the deal is. Like, they just didn't have time to get those all last fall in the big model? Or do they really intend to update the big model and the small model on staggered schedules? I'm not sure I see the whole picture here yet. I'd agree with you 100%. It seems very, very strange. Because the, the new... probably better than the 12.9 inch, aside from the larger screen that's on the 12.9 and potentially battery life. I haven't seen that too much. It almost makes me think that this 9.7 inch is a delayed version of iPad, but then was delayed, but then they had time to fit more features in or something. I'm not sure because because the iPad Pro was just last fall, so yeah. it, it, it wasn't too much better than this. So you'd think that they could fit you know 12 megapixel camera into the ipad pro but apparently not it might have to do with uh, how fast the suppliers can make products though when compared with iphones and things i don't know yeah uh, so so what do we think do we think this model is going to be much more uh receptive in the market yeah i mean i have to say that i would probably pick that one uh if i didn't have my air 2 and i would i were in the market for an ipad today i think the 9.7 it should be the one that uh seems seems more kind of uh reasonable to uh the sort of like working needs of somebody who wants a an ipad for work purposes uh than perhaps the 13 inch one or the 12.9 inch so we don't know yet but presumably it's the same processor at the same clock speed with the same amount of memory but we don't right. know that so we don't know that do you think they cut any corners in that regard that's a good question. I'm going to say that they probably underclocked the processor slightly, uh, as they've been known to do before with, I believe it was the uh, the Mini, that was uh, the Mini 4, which was running the same processor, technically speaking, as the iPad Air 2, but it is a little bit underclocked. I bet they're doing the same thing here, but I bet it's only slightly, and I'm sure the RAM is yeah. uh, about the same, but um, what do I know? I don't have one in my hands. <laughs> yeah, I'm curious if they cut the memory at all, because... Yeah, the four gigabytes in the iPad. I think I'd like to think they had it, but I don't know. Knowing Apple, they probably didn't put four in, but maybe they put. Maybe they did. I don't know. I mean, you wouldn't put three themselves. in. That'd be weird. Yeah. How do you? Yeah, make... but then two doesn't seem like enough. So. Yeah. I would think four, but it's not also quite like the iP- the twelve point nine inch where you have two full size iPad apps next to each other. Right. Yeah, but if you're going to be doing, if you expect to be doing the same thing, you know. You would expect it to be the same, just not. You you wouldn't expect it to be worse. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, well, I guess we'll find out when the uh, pre-orders begin. When? Good question. I think the pre-orders begin to do uh, Thursday. Thursday. Yeah. Thank you. Right. Yeah. I've done my homework. <laughs> <laughs> that was a John Gerber totally. moment. That was indeed. Uh. So uh, before we end, I wanted to go, kind of go over the iPad pricing structure briefly because Absolutely. I find it you know, very interesting. I've always been fascinated. Wait, I have one more thing about okay. the iPad. Yeah, yeah. iPad, go. The thing about on their website, embedded Apple SIM. What does that mean? They, had, they didn't talk about their keynote at all. That's what I'm wondering. It, um, it sounds like they have a SIM card that's fake? directly on the motherboard. So, oh, right, so th- I, I don't know. Let me, is, let me see if I can find that punch. footnote. That is footnote six. Embedded Apple SIM and iPad Pro 9.7 inch may be disabled when purchased from carriers. See your carrier for details. Apple embedded SIM and Apple embedded SIM not available in China. Okay, great. So it's anything. What, what is, does that mean? It's what does that mean? I don't understand. So I guess it probably has to do with the way that, um, like. So, so in the U.S. and in most countries, presumably, that use the GSM cell standard, it's pretty easy to just have uh, a GSM SIM card built into your phone. That's I, as the way I understand it is that that's the way that Verizon used to do it for the longest times. They just had an embedded SIM inside most Verizon phones. That made it really easy for it to work on Verizon, but really difficult for, for it to work essentially on any other carrier because in order to uh, take it off, you had to uh, essentially reprogram the embedded SIM. Uh, and Apple's already uh, kind of had a way to do this with their Apple SIM. Yeah. Uh, if you guys remember, that was originally released with uh, earlier iPads that allowed you to switch carriers really easily. Yep. Um, and it sounds like that's what they're going for here. But I bet in China and in some other countries, there's probably some 
uh, restrictions related to what networks you can access uh, and what you know, what carriers that might happen, and some other different like regulatory things that we uh, perhaps may only be able to speculate about on this side of the pond. Mm -hmm. But um, well, it's kind of interesting though that they call it embedded rather than just the Apple SIM. It almost makes it feel like it's not something you can change. Oh, absolutely, absolutely right. Uh, that uh, I, maybe I'm not describing the Verizon thing appropriately, but um, I think that like with my with my Droid Incredible, for example, there was no physical SIM card in it. Um, it was just a you know you, there was the battery and then there was the phone, and you could take out the battery, but the phone itself you could never take out the SIM card. It was it integrated into the very uh, chipset of the phone, or at least that's the way I understood it. Why would you want that? Uh, if you're Verizon, so that you can't change it. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't. I, I'm not Verizon. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so iPad structure. Yes, indeed. So according to the iPad comparison page, which is, oh, you know, just a a big chart, we have a lot of iPads. So who wants to go over this? All right. So it starts with the I, iPad. I, uh, Brian's got it. All right, go for it. <laughs> it's horrible. Okay. Um, iPad Mini 2 for 269 which they still sell iPad Mini 4 for 399 iPad Air 2 also for 399 iPad Pro 9.7 inch for 599 and iPad Pro 7 12 for 799 and that's all for their base model which for some is 32 and some is 16 64 I think or 16 yeah. oh mm -hmm. what they're still selling 16 gigabyte iPads that is a tragedy well, they're still selling 16 gigabyte iPhones. Oh no! So, so wh where I want to go with this is uh, there's a lot of iPads now. So right. there's there's five discrete models of iPad now, and they may all look or may not look identical. It depends. Um, but more importantly, let's let's count how many SKUs there are. And I could I could be wrong here in my math, but I've counted 77 SKUs. Nope, I've confirmed it. 77 SKUs. And so 77 different iPad varieties. So that means there's colors for each of these things, and then there's a choice of size and or connectivity. And that's a lot of choices. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, you know, now there's, there's an iPad for everyone, right? And there is. <laughs> and so that, that's one of those really interesting things. So Apple here has abandoned their 499 point of reference in the ipad lineup mm -hmm. you know for years i would i would go around and annoy my family you know that that costs two ipads that costs one ipad you know you yep. can get that new car for eight ipads and <laughs> um you know that's gone now it's not 499 anymore so now right. they've they've stretched how much an ipad costs they have a 399 option and a 599 option and it's interesting that they did that absolutely absolutely i mean one one could read this cynically and say that it's because of um, the comparative quote unquote difficulty that the iPad's been having uh, when it comes to time to do the earnings calls because it hasn't been selling quite as astronomically well as certain other Apple products like the iPhone. Uh, the same sort of uh, dirge that they've been playing for the watch as well at the same yep. time. Um, but uh, the uh, th those of us who've had sufficiently uh, drank the Kool-Aid will respond to that by saying, yeah, well, not, not every product's an iPhone, which is accurate. Um, but you can see here that there's definitely something that they're telegraphing with this kind of a, uh, a widespread lineup. Um, and it seems like uh, they're trying to figure out which one of these pieces of spaghetti will stick to the metaphorical wall. Yeah, but they're doing it in a better way than other companies have done that. So if you take a oh, look totally. at Samsung... Whoa. If you take a look at Samsung, for example, Samsung has been notorious in their endeavors to find a tablet that doesn't suck, and they've failed every <laughs> single time. You, you can You can look at, I don't even know what their current lineup of tablets are, but they have like <laughs> eight different models. Tablets. Yeah. So there's that. And let's see, what else? Um, most companies don't really have a lot of tablet stuff these days. Pretty much it's mm -hmm. either a Surface Pro or Surface, or an iPad, or an iPad Pro, right? Uh, or you know some some you know variation of that. And there's there's not a whole lot of competition. So when Apple says they're struggling, you can just imagine how many um, how many others are struggling with the same issue. Right, right. 
I think somebody here has another calculation they would like to share. This is uh, your your iPad skews. I just think I think someone was saying there are fifty four bands that Apple makes now. Right. Twitter. Yes, that I read that too. Off. I really don't. Know. And then there are eight watches. So there's thirty two and forty two millimeter, two for <laughs> edition, two for standard, and then there's the four different colors for the sport. So that's eight, and that t- comes up to six hundred and forty eight different combinations for the Apple Watch. Not that I don't wow. think you can get every band with every watch, although I could be wrong. But uh, I don't think you can. But uh, that's close enough. That's close enough. I think it it uh, cancels itself out with some of the other watches that might be because I think you can get more than eight kinds of watches because aren't there different tones for the edition? Or I could be wrong about that. Oh, can I get a can yeah, I get a actually, watch personally touched by Johnny Ive? Probably. <laughs> That'll probably. be another three thousand dollars. Oh darn. <laughs> You know, uh, I saw yeah, on Twitter. Brad, I feel like you're right. About yeah, it. I saw on Twitter that there's, you know, uh, Apple, you know, has been for years kind of haunted by the Steve Jobs four products in a cell quadrant right. thing, and you know, you don't have to be restricted by the skew count anymore. You know, we we're beyond that now. This is a time right. where everybody understands that there's a reason for the product existing, and they're not so confused by it. But that, nevertheless, it still haunts me that there's so many iPads and so many iPhones and so many watch combinations. The watch thing's a little bit different because it's intentional. Right. I mean, there there are only eight watch types, and then you can just go and buy as many bands as you want. But when you go right. and buy an iPad, you don't get to get an iPad with Wi-Fi in uh, space gray and then later change it to an iPad with cellular and rose gold. It's not optional. You have to pick. Right. So it's a little different. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And like another thing too, that the iPad lineup is kind of interesting uh, is that it's, it's not immediately clear based on the price, which is the best, you know, quote unquote, best iPad uh, best here, meaning uh, which is the most feature rich perhaps. Um, So you can, you can get the big one. Or you can get the one that's not quite as big, but that seems to have a, a longer spec sheet. Or you can get the old one from almost two years ago that, that that's the same size as the big one with the longer specs, but it's $200 cheaper, <laughs> right? And the, the list goes on from there uh, throughout, as Ryan pointed out, the other 77 SKUs. Um, so let's, which... say, let's say you're an, an, a normal average person and you go into mm-hmm. an Apple store now. What questions do they ask you to figure out which iPad they need to sell you? Yeah, absolutely. I think the first one's got to be, what are you trying to do with it? You know. And so, um, what does a normal average person do? I'd probably say surf the web, right? Okay, so well, I just want to check my email on it. I just want to look at Facebook and play Candy Crush. Not okay, so then, then which one, one of these? Read a book or... Okay, read a book, watch a movie, maybe. Right. Okay, so then which one of these iPads here do we suggest? I would immediately I've go for the Air Two. Oh, really? I, I feel like there's some conflict here. <laughs> I would I, so I say I need because I think that's that's what I own and I've I've never at one point felt like <clears throat> in a full uh, with the exception of taking notes on my using my built-on screen for typing um, really needed something else so just any like light web browsing you know Facebook or Twitter or reading a book I think the seven point nine inch screen is fine because it's it's big enough. It's a little bit, little bit lighter for holding in one hand if you're reading or something in bed. Um, the only time I think where it really makes sense to get the larger screen, I guess the 9.7, would be if you are doing even more typing, you're doing a little more productivity in terms of looking at two things at once. So you can don't have to quite squint as much if you're looking back and forth a bit. And then, of course, I think the 12.9 inch is there for the power users who want to replace a computer with their iPad. So I Which think that so the, the full iPad Pro is a small group of people. And then the other, the mini and the normal are, or normal being 9.7 inch, are the more in debate. But I think a mini really would suit most people. And especially because the prices are a, quite a bit cheaper. So the bell, bell curve is skewed to the right. That is very interesting to me because I so I, I should probably ad- admit before I go any further that um, I have an Air Two and I use it quite extensively for taking notes, typing papers, uh, even occasionally programming, uh, much to everyone's chagrin. Uh, <laughs> but 
uh, I love the darn thing, and I don't know if I'd uh, I'd ever uh, pick any other iPad uh, except for perhaps a Pro at some point. But um, I've never actually owned a Mini, or neither has anyone in my family. But they've always kind of intrigued me as a nifty form factor. Um, and one thing that I think Brian uh, pointed out here that perhaps I didn't catch the first part was that the Air Two and the Mini Four, as we've discussed before on this very episode, but apparently I wasn't uh, that didn't stick in my mind. Uh, they're actually at the same price point, three hundred ninety nine dollars starting out, um, which is pretty significant because you know, it, in the most cynical of senses, um, the profit margin may potentially be different between the two of these. In fact, probably. I guess it probably is. Yeah, but it's it's hard to tell from the outside looking in which of these uh, would be considered uh, more important. Say, shall we say, for Apple to get rid of? Right? <laughs> How many more of these do they need to move? Uh, I guess I can't. I can't say from the outside looking in. I mean, I can't imagine the yeah, lineup so without I, either of them. I mean, they have right. to be. There. I did. I did miss the um, same price there. Yeah, that's a good point. The the CPUs in the Air Two and the Mini Four are roughly the same. The right. Air Two is A Eight X versus the iPad Mini Four is A Eight. So graphics are better on the Air Two. So yeah, at that point, I think it comes more towards: Are you going to be, as you're saying, doing like writing papers and typing and using the iPad for a little more work. And I guess it comes down to, are you going to be typing on your screen more than a little bit or just scrolling through lists of web pages? Because how I use mine, it's more of like a passive thing. I maybe watch a little a video on there or YouTube and scroll through feeds, basically. Whereas if you're going to be doing more active work, a larger screen is often more useful because you can see things a little better. Right, right. So I think, Brandon, you do fall into the, the, I think, just describing what work you do. I think the 9.7 inch works for what you do. And that's what I would recommend for someone for what, if they're describing what you describe your use for. Right. And another part of it I should probably emphasize too is that um, I've I've never seen a mini in uh, in the wild for more than a couple hours. So uh, really my only frame of ref- reference is the original iPad. Uh, which is, I think, the only other iPad in my house. So the the iPad Gen One from two thousand nine or two thousand ten, whatever that that came Get out. Get it out! <laughs> don't 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 see it anymore. It's over. Get it out of there. Nope, nope. We're we're keeping it. It's still running. It's oh a, my god! It's, it's like a um, a gaming machine now for for my dad. So yeah, it's like you 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 play like Will it turn on today game? <laughs> That's one of them. That's one of them. <laughs> oh man. Well, this is awesome. I think we've... And, uh, and so just for my... Huh? No, we don't. Brian has something <laughs> else. Go for it. Sorry. Just no, my no. little thing. I have I use a mini. I don't really have... I've had a full... I think he had an iPad mini. An iPad 3. But um, he didn't use it a ton around me. So I, I'm more used to seeing the mini. And you're more used to seeing the 9.7 inch. So I think that kind of also maybe influencing our ideas. Yeah, it's interesting stuff for sure. Interesting stuff. You know, believe it or not, before I got the iPad Air, uh, which I, th- I think might have been uh, before we all knew each other, but um, when I when I ordered my iPad Air 2, I was very close to ordering a Mini. Uh, but once I saw that keynote and I saw how the uh, the iPad Mini 3, may it rest in peace, was uh, so ludicrously out uh, out uh, outstripped by the Air 2, yep. I just couldn't couldn't convince myself to do it. Uh, and I, I couldn't convince yeah. myself to get a Mini 2. As awesome as that tablet was, I couldn't convince myself to do it, knowing that I'd be kicking myself every darn day as I was trying to take notes on uh, on that, uh, what, what is it, almost five-year-old <laughs> iPad now. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, I think if I were in your, in your position, I would definitely have gotten the iPad Air as well. My iPad Mini 2, the when, when they announced the iPad Air and iPad 2, and... They're, they have the same CPU, except the Mini 2 has 100 megahertz store, so and a slightly worse display. So the Air and the Mini 2 are roughly the same, whereas yeah. the Mini 3 and the Air 2 are a whole generation apart. So I've got right. one more question for you. Do you think the iPad Air 2 and the Mini 4 will be upgraded later this year? <sighs> That's a good one. Uh, I'm not 100% sure. The I... I did not hear that. Uh, Will they be upgraded later this year? The Air 2 and the Mini 4. Okay. Hmm. What do you think, Brian? Probably not. I, well, I'm graduating in a month and a half. 
So I, I, I use it a bit for school. So it's a nice light device I can carry to campus when I don't have my MacBook with me because that's right. heavier and takes up more space. And so it's, it's a nice light thing that I can load a PDF for on that I need to class or something like that. Quick, check a website, check Moodle or something. So it, I don't use it too much around the house. It sits in my backpack until I go to campus the next day or if I need to charge it overnight. So I don't think I'll be buying one unless I really get into iOS development or something. I don't see myself buying a new iPad until this thing is completely obsolete. Mm -hmm. Do you think, Brian, that this uh, that these two, the Mini 4 and the Air 2, will be upgraded by Apple at any point in the next year or so? Do you think that Apple will be like, do you well, think so will that there be an Air 3 lines? and a Mini 5, in other words? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, um, maybe. I th The Pro 9.7-inch is now going to be the the 9.7-inch iPad. I They must. They have to be using a new Mini, but I think it would be an iPad Pro Mini, not a iPad Mini. I don't know. I, I'm not quite sure. That'd be weird. I'm just kind of going to wait, I guess. So yeah, I think I don't know, but I just see they're pushing such high specs on the top end, and the low end is is older models. So I see them updating the the lower end models, or the smaller screen size models with newer hardware. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they dropped the Mini Two, but, made that the Mini Four, upgraded the Air Two to Air Three, and made a new iPad Mini Five. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, that's yeah, that's actually probably pretty likely. I'd agree with know. Ryan, and I'm going to take... The super compelling features, maybe I'll be interested in new iPhone this also. Probably not this year. Mm -hmm. I'd agree with Ryan, and I think I'm going to take it one step further. I bet at some point there's going to be a grand event. This is my product marketing brain talking. There's going to be a grand event where Apple abolishes <laughs> all Airs. So the uh, iPad Air and the MacBook Air, and there will only be the iPads and the iPad Pros, and the MacBooks, and the MacBook Pros. And uh, if you wanted to take it somewhere way beyond the realm of possibility, uh, we could uh, abolish the iMacs and just leave Mac Minis and Mac Pros too, but I don't think that's going to happen. I think the iMac is pretty iconic, and that's going to stick around. Well, but, you, you, uh, you could have an iMac Air. Right, 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 yeah. right, right, right. <laughs> But um, I think it, it, from, from my, that would really make my product marketing brain happy. Uh, and I think it would make the specs, uh, the, the narrative surrounding the, the different specs that you'd have on these devices make a little bit more sense. So right now on the, on the laptop side, of course, uh, the MacBook uh, full stop, the MacBook One, uh, as it's been called sometimes by uh, other us. pundits. Us, mostly. Yeah. <laughs> um, a it's actually thinner and lighter than the iPad Air, which, or than the than the MacBook Air, which is a little bit weird. awfully strange. Um, so that that leaves the Air at kind of a weird point because it has a crappier screen, uh, and it's larger and heavier and thicker than uh, something which is called a MacBook. So I think that that as we've kind of discussed in other channels, um, that device's days are numbered. But and on I the bet... other hand, that, Mac that MacBook Air is also significantly cheaper on the lowest end. You can get a 13-inch for eight ninety nine, and that is either fantastic for education or is fantastic for somebody who wants a Mac but who doesn't want to pay a fortune. No, absolutely, and I, I agree with you 100% on that because... Um, I think that, they would have a very hard time terrible. getting rid of that. That's that's true, but the brand name doesn't fit. I think and that's that's my, that's what my product marketing brain's reacting to right now. <laughs> I think yeah, for, I agree with you, Reddit. From a marketing branding, I think that for for the the MacBook line, I've been thinking they're going to kill the air for a bit. I guess since they introduced the the plain MacBook, because it just doesn't fit at all. I agree, the it air doesn't is fit. Heavier than air. but it 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 sells it's heavier too than well. Normal. But it sells too well, and it is too cheap to get rid of. So I'm 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 wondering that they if might what... just be clearing inventory at this point. I don't know. I think. Well, they they had a refresh fairly recently, didn't they? Didn't they have a refresh in fall? Uh, to to Broadwell, perhaps. Probably. Yeah, I think I think you're right about that. But I guess maybe what what I should clarify that the something that looks very similar to the current MacBook Air might stick around, but I don't think it'll be called a MacBook Air anymore. That's okay. I. I bet they're going to shift it around, and that that will that could be like a MacBook, uh, a MacBook Basic. I don't know. Mac, uh, oh dear. Uh, 
you know, like the like the as as you mentioned, kind of like the entry level MacBook. Well, they need then, something. Then, definitely, they need something to fulfill that role, just like they need the iMac, uh, the the nine hundred dollar iMac, or the uh, the uh, entry level Mac Mini, because those things, oh my gosh, like they're awesome. We use them. Uh, uh, I, I've seen them used all, all over the place on on campus. Uh, I should uh, I should clarify there that my office does not use those in that capacity but i looked it up the uh the most recent macbook air release was in early 15 and it is indeed right. using broadwell nice oh yeah score one for my brain <laughs> nice but I, th- I think you're right that 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 product itself fulfills a need i don't think that it fits the air brand any longer and i think that phil Sh- that makes phil Schuler yeah. sad and he's gonna fix it he's I mean, gonna fix it God it's it. it's so <laughs> weird that the macbook one has a weaker processor but a better screen and there's no in between that and then the pro lineup which is bigger and better in all the regards absolutely my hypothesis is going to be that every every mac is going to look closer to the macbook uh one right now and the air looks close enough to the macbook one that i bet it could stick around but it can't be called the air anymore because it's no longer light what if they call that the macbook one I would be okay with that. I'd That'd be, all be right weird with that. too. <laughs> yeah, indeed. We will have to wait and see for WWDC when they will likely release a whole new MacBook line. Hopefully, yeah, or, or September, or September. They might, they might keep it until uh, until the fall. Who they knows? are not allowed to do that. They must release. Just, they, be- they better not. I don't have that kind Just of time. <laughs> So one last one last thing I'll add here before we before we go. Did you guys catch the intro video for uh, at this keynote? I caught some of it, although my computer was still loading yep. the stream at that point. It sounded like they were going to announce something on April first. Did you guys catch what that might have been? I didn't um, see it, and I didn't see anyone writing about it. It was the fortieth um, anniversary. I thought, no, I thought. It, oh right, April that was 1st it. Is the 40th. right? So Maybe April first anniversary Macintosh. With, yep, fortieth anniversary. Uh, whatever fancy speaker system. Yeah, <laughs> that was in the twentieth century or twentieth anniversary one. Right, right, right. It's a Bose, the Bose speaker system, as always. Oh no, that would be really cool. I, yeah, um, yeah. they cool. they will never do that though. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah, I don't uh, think that, Apple doesn't want to touch April first. But, but Apple has a Twitter account now, so maybe they'll be all over the Twitter sphere. That's true. That's yeah, because it's ten years old. Well, before we age any further, I think we should wrap the show up. Indeed, indeed. So where can we find you on the internet? All right. Yes, where can we find you on the internet, Brian? Uh, you can find me just about anywhere, but especially on, on 4789 or Tech4789 uh, or my website, B-Man. No, no not that. Uh, BrianM.me. And where you can find a paid project, Weatherbot, which just uh, hit 1.0 on Sunday, technically Monday. So, right. yeah. I sorry, no, Sunday. Saturday, technically Sunday. <laughs> I remember seeing your tweet about that. It was quite nifty. So Brian's Weatherbot is now available on GitHub, which is pretty slick. Uh, he wrote some awesome release notes, as he mentioned, and you can find that all on his GitHub page, which is accessible from his Twitter profile, which is accessible from his page on the Nexus.tv. That's right. Yeah. Uh, I, on the other hand, am uh, Brian and Johnson. You can find me on the internet. Uh, at various places by my uh, most frequent username, which is Brandon underscore MN. Uh, You can find me on Twitter where I talk about things uh, relating to technology, the internet, and society things. I've recently shifted towards talking more about uh, Crisis Com in particular. Uh, Most recently, I've been ranting about stuff like the SF... uh, the San Francisco uh, Bay Area Rapid Transit System and the way that they've reacted to uh, some social media reactions to their twittery things but if you can't tell i'm kind of a marketing brain person uh so that's where some of my stuff lies nowadays uh additionally you can find me on instagram uh brandon underscore mn once again where i post pictures of trips to california where i uh take pictures of mountains which may or may not exist but are pretty nifty mountains uh and i like to keep them there also you can find me on snapchat by the very same name uh and as i mentioned pretty much any other uh, social network that's about it for me but where can we find you ryan well you can find me just about anywhere especially on the twitter at ryan Amar, and of course on the google plus which is where i post pictures of brian and i and ian buck walking uh for hours and hours all down a trail near a waterfall <laughs> without brandon because he was gallivanting in some other nicer warmer state 
<laughs> I am so sad to have missed that. Ah, uh, it's okay. Uh, we'll do it again. Indeed. indeed. Next time. Well, this has been a good episode. Thanks for coming. As always. Have a good one. Yep. See you on the flip side. Woohoo!